Uh, Mom, I think the, the podcast has officially begun. It's lovely to see you during the awkward mic testing portion of the program. I heard you telling Chuck about your recent calamity, and I made reference to it in a Facebook post, but I think people are curious to know what happened. Have you healed? Your lip appears to have returned to normal. I was walking across the living room from one end to the other, and suddenly... I was heading for the floor and there was nothing I could do about it. That split second when you realize that your feet have stopped and your head hasn't, it's really scary. Yeah. So I hit the floor the and I have an implant tooth right in the front and it went right through my lip, Jeez. left a hole on the outside. And, um, and I have bruising in my chest and my knees were blue. It wasn't nice. It's very disturbing to hear stories about your elderly mother falling face first in their apartment, your your teeth going through your lip, the bruising, all of this stuff. But equally disturbing is the phone call that I recently learned you got moments afterwards where you're lying in bed from Chuck. Yes, he was calling, I think, about this podcast, weren't you, Chuck? Yes, I was calling to check your availability to when we could record, yes. It was hard to talk with that ice bag on my face. I mean, my, my lip was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> you, you did have a bit of a lisp, I as did. it were. I couldn't pronounce <laughs> initial consonants very well. I hear the story from you roughly 36 hours later. I try to FaceTime you the next day, and you won't pick up the phone <laughs> because your face is misshapen, and you don't want me to see you. And I can't put any of this together until I finally get you on the phone and you tell me you had a fall. You walk through the whole thing. Tooth goes through your lip. You're all puffed up. It's a disaster. You're in bed. You're bruised. You're miserable. And then you told me you told Chuck about this the day before. And the two of you decide, for reasons I still don't understand, not to tell me. Right. Well, I didn't tell your brothers either because what could you do about it except worry? I was just following orders. Yes, you, you were. <laughs> She told me not to tell you. She didn't want to worry you. Who started the deception? How deep does the conspiracy go? I think I probably said something like, I won't tell anybody. I can answer this if you don't mind. Please do. Uh, I believe you said, Peggy, don't tell Mike. I don't want to worry him. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. I'm sorry. How yeah. could I forget? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> if you insist. 36 hours later, I get a call from Mike going, and thanks a lot for telling me about my mom falling. Yeah, I mean, somewhere in the last day or two, the entire hierarchy in my organization has changed. <laughs> Chuck doesn't work for me. He doesn't work for MicroWorks. He's not the producer of the podcast anymore. He works for Peggy Rowe. Now try to remember that, Peggy. Mike. Yeah, well, believe me, I will. <laughs> well, listen. This is a valuable lesson. If I had fallen on the coffee table, the lovely coffee table that your father made for me, mm -hmm. it would have been a different story. I I would have been talking to Chuck in the hospital um, because it there's a sharp And we still edge. would have kept it from you. Yes. We... <laughs> <laughs> no, where's mom? Nowhere. She's fine. No, she's, no, uh, no. Yeah, she's, talked to her. She, she was good. She moved to a farm upstate. Skiing. Don't worry skiing. about her. She's skiing. <laughs> No, you, so you missed the corner of that coffee table that dad made in the wood shop by like an inch. By, yeah, by inches, yeah. And listen, it was a wake up call. I was hurrying. I wasn't paying attention to where my feet were. You better believe I pick my feet up very high now when I'm going onto that carpet. <laughs> it's a, it's an area rug, a room size area rug. I've taken up all the other scatter rugs because they tell you when you move in that they are such a danger, especially to older people. They're so easy to trip on. Yeah, they're trip wires. They're landmines around your apartment. Every, everything in the apartment is, is taking on a component of, of a dangerous thing, right? You just have to look at everything differently from rugs to coffee tables to, God, all of it. It's worrisome. Well, this is true. Makes me want to cover up the four corners of the coffee table with foam rubber. But do it. How attractive would that be? You know, we're here to discuss the the incredible success of your audio book, uh, and you know, it's just we just have to get past the the visual of America's grandmother face down in her apartment, spitting out her teeth, you know, 
and then conspiring with my producer to keep it from me. I just want to establish that before we get on to the, the next topic at hand. But the two of you together uh, are liars. And, um, <laughs> well, that's, and that's, that's kind of extreme, Mike. The funny part is, we haven't even discussed that. Your father was on the phone when I fell. And when I finally was able to get enough breath into my lungs to summon him and call, John, John, help me. Uh, he said, oh, okay, wait a minute. And he <laughs> finished his phone conversation and he came in and he was very upset, of course. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then the phone rang again. He said, wait a minute. And he answered the phone <laughs> again because it was really an important call that he'd been waiting for. Uh, but but he didn't talk long, and um, oh well, there you go. He That's might have gone for to... ice while he was talking. <laughs> That's a secret to sixty-two years of marriage, knowing knowing when to take the call and when not to take the call. 